Orbital mechanics or astrodynamics is the application of ballistics and celestial mechanics to the practical problems concerning the motion of rockets and other spacecraft. The motion of these objects is usually calculated from Newton's laws of motion and Newton's law of universal gravitation. It is a core discipline within space mission design and control. Celestial mechanics treats more broadly the orbital dynamics of systems under the influence of gravity, including both spacecraft and natural astronomical bodies such as star systems, planets, moons and comets. Orbital mechanics focuses on spacecraft trajectories, including orbital maneuvers, orbit plane changes, and interplanetary transfers, and is used by mission planners to predict the results of propulsive maneuvers. General relativity is a more exact theory than Newton's laws for calculating orbits, and is sometimes necessary for greater accuracy or in high gravity situations, such as orbits close to the Sun. History Until the rise of space travel in the 20th century, there was little distinction between orbital and celestial mechanics. At the time of Sputnik, the field was termed space dynamics. The fundamental techniques, such as those used to solve the Keplerian problem determining position as a function of time, are therefore the same in both fields. Furthermore, the history of the fields are almost entirely shared. Johannes Kepler was the first to successfully model planetary orbits to a high degree of accuracy, publishing his laws in 1605. Isaac Newton published more general laws of celestial motion in the first edition of Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica 1687, which gave a method for finding the orbit of a body following a parabolic path from three observations. This was used by Edmund Halley to establish the orbits of various comets, including that which bears his name. Newton's method of successive approximation was formalized into an analytic method by Euler in 1744, whose work was in turn generalized to elliptical and hyperbolic orbits by Lambert in 1761–1777. Another milestone in orbit determination was Carl Friedrich Gauss's assistance in the «recovery» of the dwarf planet series in 1801. Gauss method was able to use just three observations in the form of pairs of right ascension and declination to find the six orbital elements that completely describe an orbit. The theory of orbit determination has subsequently been developed to the point where today it is applied in GPS receivers as well as the tracking and cataloging of newly observed minor planets. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Practical techniques. Topic. Rules of thumb The following rules of thumb are useful for situations approximated by classical mechanics under the standard assumptions of astrodynamics outlined below the rules. The specific example discussed is of a satellite orbiting a planet, but the rules of thumb could also apply to other situations, such as orbits of small bodies around a star such as the Sun. Kepler's laws of planetary motion Orbits are elliptical, with the heavier body at one focus of the ellipse. Special case of this is a circular orbit a circle is a special case of ellipse with the planet at the center. A line drawn from the planet to the satellite sweeps out equal areas in equal times no matter which portion of the orbit is measured. The square of a satellite's orbital period is proportional to the cube of its average distance from the planet. Without applying force such as firing a rocket engine, the period and shape of the satellite's orbit won't change. A satellite in a low orbit or low part of an elliptical orbit moves more quickly with respect to the surface of the planet than a satellite in a higher orbit or a high part of an elliptical orbit, due to the stronger gravitational attraction closer to the planet. If thrust is applied at only one point in the satellite's orbit, it will return to that same point on each subsequent orbit, though the rest of its path will change. Thus one cannot move from one circular orbit to another with only one brief application of thrust. From a circular orbit, thrust applied in a direction opposite to the satellite's motion changes orbit to elliptical, the satellite will descend and reach the lowest orbital point the periapse at 180 degrees away from the firing point, then it will ascend back. Thrust applied in the direction of the satellite's motion creates an elliptical orbit with its highest point apopsy 180 degrees away from the firing point. The consequences of the rules of orbital mechanics are sometimes counterintuitive. 
For example, if two spacecraft are in the same circular orbit and wish to dock, unless they are very close, the trailing craft cannot simply fire its engines to go faster. This will change the shape of its orbit, causing it to gain altitude and actually slow down relative to the leading craft, missing the target. The space rendezvous before docking normally takes multiple precisely calculated engine firings in multiple orbital periods requiring hours or even days to complete. To the degree that the standard assumptions of astrodynamics do not hold, actual trajectories will vary from those calculated. For example, simple atmospheric drag is another complicating factor for objects in low Earth orbit. These rules of thumb are decidedly inaccurate when describing two or more bodies of similar mass, such as a binary star system Celestial mechanics uses more general rules applicable to a wider variety of situations. Kepler's laws of planetary motion, which can be mathematically derived from Newton's laws, hold strictly only in describing the motion of two gravitating bodies in the absence of non-gravitational forces, they also describe parabolic and hyperbolic trajectories. In the close proximity of large objects like stars the differences between classical mechanics and general relativity also become important. Laws of astrodynamics The fundamental laws of astrodynamics are Newton's law of universal gravitation and Newton's laws of motion, while the fundamental mathematical tool is his differential calculus. Every orbit and trajectory outside atmospheres is in principle reversible, i.e., in the spacetime function the time is reversed. The velocities are reversed and the accelerations are the same, including those due to rocket bursts. Thus if a rocket burst is in the direction of the velocity, in the reversed case it is opposite to the velocity. Of course in the case of rocket bursts there is no full reversal of events, both ways the same delta V is used and the same mass ratio applies. Standard assumptions in astrodynamics include non-interference from outside bodies, negligible mass for one of the bodies, and negligible other forces such as from the solar wind, atmospheric drag, etc. More accurate calculations can be made without these simplifying assumptions, but they are more complicated. The increased accuracy often does not make enough of a difference in the calculation to be worthwhile. Kepler's laws of planetary motion may be derived from Newton's laws, when it is assumed that the orbiting body is subject only to the gravitational force of the central attractor. When an engine thrust or propulsive force is present, Newton's laws still apply, but Kepler's laws are invalidated. When the thrust stops, the resulting orbit will be different but will once again be described by Kepler's laws. The three laws are The orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the foci. A line joining a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. The squares of the orbital periods of planets are directly proportional to the cubes of the semi-major axis of the orbits. <laughs> <laughs> Escape velocity The formula for an escape velocity is easily derived as follows. The specific energy, energy per unit mass of any space vehicle is composed of two components, the specific potential energy and the specific kinetic energy. The specific potential energy associated with a planet of mass m is given by E p equals minus g m r display style epsilon underscore p equals frac g m r while the specific kinetic energy of an object is given by E k equals v two two display style epsilon underscore k equals frac v caret two two, since energy is conserved, E equals E k plus E p display style epsilon equals epsilon underscore K plus epsilon underscore P and so the total specific orbital energy e equals V 2 2 minus G M R display style epsilon equals frac V carrot 2 2 frac GM R does not depend on the distance R display style R 
from the center of the central body to the space vehicle in question. Therefore, the object can reach infinite r r only if this quantity is non-negative, which implies v 2 g m r display style v g e q s q r t f r a c 2 g m r the escape velocity from the earth's surface is about 11 kilometers per second but that is insufficient to send the body an infinite distance because of the gravitational pull of the sun to escape the solar system from a location at a distance from the sun equal to the distance sun earth but not close to the earth requires around 42 kilometers per second velocity but there will be part credit for the Earth's orbital velocity for spacecraft launched from Earth, if their further acceleration due to the propulsion system carries them in the same direction as Earth travels in its orbit. Topic: <laughs> Formulae for free orbits. Orbits are conic sections, so the formula for the distance of a body for a given angle corresponds to the formula for that curve in polar coordinates, which is R equals P one plus E cos theta display style R equals frac P one plus E cos theta mu equals G m one plus m two Display style mu equals g m underscore one plus m underscore two p equals h two mu display style p equals h caret two mu mu display style mu is called the gravitational parameter m one display style m underscore one and m Two display style m underscore two are the masses of objects one and two, and h display style h is the specific angular momentum of object two with respect to object one. The parameter theta display style theta is known as the true anomaly. P display style p is the semi lattice rectum, while E display style E is the orbital eccentricity, all obtainable from the various forms of the six independent orbital elements. Topic: Circular orbits. All bounded orbits where the gravity of a central body dominates are elliptical in nature. A special case of this is the circular orbit, which is an ellipse of zero eccentricity. The formula for the velocity of a body in a circular orbit at distance r from the center of gravity of mass m can be derived as follows. Centrifugal acceleration matches the acceleration due to gravity. So v 2 r equals g m r 2 display style v caret 2 r equals g m r caret 2 Therefore, v equals g m r. Display style v equals sqrt frac g m r, where g display style g is the gravitational constant equal to. 6.67384 times 10 minus 11 cubic meters kilogram s2. To properly use this formula, the units must be consistent. For example, m display style m must be in kilograms, and r display style r must be in meters. The answer will be in meters per second. The quantity g m display style gm is often termed the standard gravitational parameter which has a different value for every planet or moon in the solar system once the circular orbital velocity is known the escape velocity is easily found by multiplying by the square root of 2 v equals 2 
G M R equals two G M R Display style V equals SQRT two SQRT FRAC GM R equals SQRT FRAC two GM R to escape from gravity, the kinetic energy must at least match the negative potential energy. So, one, two, m, v, two equals g, m, m, r. Display style one half m v caret two equals g m m r, and therefore v equals Two G M R display style v equals sqrt frac two G M R topic elliptical orbits if zero e one display style zero then the denominator of the equation of free orbits varies with the true anomaly theta display style theta but remains positive never becoming zero. Therefore, the relative position vector remains bounded, having its smallest magnitude at periopsis R p, display style R underscore p, which is given by R p equals p one plus e, display style R underscore p equals frac p one plus e. The maximum value R, display style R, is reached when theta equals one hundred eighty, display style theta equals one hundred eighty caret circ. This point is called the apopsis, and its radial coordinate, denoted. R a display style R underscore a is R a equals p one minus e display style R underscore a equals frac p one e let two a display style two a be the distance measured along the apse line from periopsis p display style p to apopsis a display style a as illustrated in the equation below 2 a equals r p plus r a Display style two a equals r underscore p plus r underscore of Substituting the equations above, we get a equals p one minus e two. Display style a equals frac p one e caret two. A is the semi-major axis of the ellipse. Solving for p. Display style p. And substituting the result in the conic section curve formula above, we get R equals a one minus e two one plus e cos theta. Display style R equals frac a one e caret two one plus e cos theta. Topic: Orbital period. Under standard assumptions, the orbital period t display style t of a body traveling along an elliptic orbit can be computed as t equals two pi a three mu display style t equals 2 pi sqrt a caret 3 over mu where mu display style mu is standard gravitational parameter a display style a is length of semi major axis conclusions the orbital period is equal to that for a circular orbit with the orbit radius equal to the semi major axis a display style a for a given semi major axis the orbital period does not depend on the eccentricity see also kepler's third law topic <laughs> velocity under standard assumptions the orbital speed v 
display style v of a body traveling along an elliptic orbit can be computed from the vis viva equation as v equals mu 2 r minus 1 a display style v equals sqrt mu left 2 over r 1 over a right where mu display style mu is the standard gravitational parameter r display style r is the distance between the orbiting bodies a display style a is the length of the semi major axis the velocity equation for a hyperbolic trajectory has either plus 1 a display style 1 over a or it is the same with the convention that in that case a is negative Topic energy under standard assumptions specific orbital energy e display style epsilon of elliptic orbit is negative and the orbital energy conservation equation the vis viva equation for this orbit can take the form v22 minus mu r equals minus mu 2 a equals e 0 display style v caret 2 over 2 mu over r equals mu over 2 a equals epsilon where v display style v is the speed of the orbiting body r display style r is the distance of the orbiting body from the center of mass of the central body a display style a is the semi major axis mu display style mu is the standard gravitational parameter conclusions for a given semi major axis the specific orbital energy is independent of the eccentricity using the virial theorem we find the time average of the specific potential energy is equal to 2 epsilon the time average of r minus 1 is a minus 1 the time average of the specific kinetic energy is equal to epsilon. Topic: <inaudible> Parabolic orbits. If the eccentricity equals 1, then the orbit equation becomes r equals h 2 mu 1 1 plus cos Theta display style r equals h caret two over mu one over one plus cos theta, where r display style r is the radial distance of the orbiting body from the mass center of the central body. H display style h is specific angular momentum of the orbiting body. Theta display style theta is the true anomaly of the orbiting body mu display style mu is the standard gravitational parameter as the true anomaly theta approaches 180 degrees the denominator approaches zero so that r tends towards infinity hence the energy of the trajectory for which e equals 1 is zero and is given by e equals v 2 2 minus mu R equals zero. Display style epsilon equals v caret two over two mu over r equals zero, where v display style v is the speed of the orbiting body. In other words, the speed anywhere on a parabolic path is v equals two mu r. Display style v equals sqrt 2 mu over r. Topic: Hyperbolic orbits. If e greater than 1, display style e greater than 1, the orbit formula r equals h 2 mu 1 1 plus e cos theta display style r equals h caret 2 over mu 1 over 1 plus e cos theta describes the geometry of the hyperbolic orbit the system consists of two symmetric curves the orbiting body occupies one of them the other one is its empty mathematical image Clearly, the denominator of the equation above goes to zero when cos 
theta equals minus 1 e display style cos theta equals minus 1 e we denote this value of true anomaly theta infinity equals cos minus 1 minus 1 e Display style theta underscore in a t equals cos caret minus one left frac one e right. Since the radial distance approaches infinity as the true anomaly approaches theta infinity. Display style theta underscore in a t, known as the true anomaly of the asymptote. Observe that theta infinity. Display style theta underscore in a t lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees from the trigonometric identity sin 2 theta plus cos 2 theta equals 1 display style sin caret 2 theta plus cos caret 2 theta equals 1 it follows that sin theta infinity equals 1 e e 2 minus 1 display style sin theta underscore in a t equals frac 1 e sqrt e caret 2 minus 1 topic energy under standard assumptions specific orbital energy E display style epsilon of a hyperbolic trajectory is greater than zero, and the orbital energy conservation equation for this kind of trajectory takes form. E equals v two two minus mu r equals mu minus two. Display style epsilon equals v caret two over two mu over r equals mu over two a, where v display style v is the orbital velocity of orbiting body r display style r is the radial distance of orbiting body from central body a display style a is the semi-major axis mu display style mu is standard gravitational parameter topic hyperbolic excess velocity under standard assumptions the body traveling along hyperbolic trajectory will attain an infinity and orbital velocity called hyperbolic excess velocity v infinity Display style v underscore in a t that can be computed as v infinity equals mu minus a display style v underscore in a t equals sqrt mu over a where mu display style mu is standard gravitational parameter a display style a is the negative semi-major axis of orbit's hyperbola. The hyperbolic excess velocity is related to the specific orbital energy or characteristic energy by 2 E equals C 3 equals V infinity 2 Display style two epsilon equals C underscore 3 equals V underscore in a t carrot 2 Topic: Calculating trajectories. Topic: Kepler's equation. One approach to calculating orbits, mainly used historically, is to use Kepler's equation. M equals e minus e sin e. Display style m equals e epsilon c dot sin e. 
where m is the mean anomaly, e is the eccentric anomaly, and e display style display style epsilon is the eccentricity. With Kepler's formula, finding the time of flight to reach an angle true anomaly of theta display style theta from periopsis is broken into two steps. Compute the eccentric anomaly e display style e from true anomaly theta display style theta compute the time of flight t display style t from the eccentric anomaly e display style e finding the eccentric anomaly at a given time the inverse problem is more difficult kepler's equation is transcendental in e display style e meaning it cannot be solved for e display style e algebraically kepler's equation can be solved for e display style e analytically by inversion a solution of kepler's equation valid for all real values of e display style text style epsilon is e equals n equals 1 infinity m n 3 n lim theta 0 d n minus 1 d theta n minus 1 theta theta minus sin theta 3 n e equals 1 n equals 1 infinity m n n lim theta 0 d n minus 1 d theta n minus 1 theta theta minus e sin theta n e does not equal 1 display style e equals begin cases display style sum underscore n equals 1 caret in a t frac m caret frac n 3 n lim underscore theta to 0 left frac mathrm d caret n 1 mathrm d theta caret n 1 left frac theta sqrt 3 theta sin theta caret n right right and epsilon equals one display style sum underscore n equals one caret in t frac m caret n n lim underscore theta to zero left frac mathrm d caret n one mathrm d theta caret n one left frac theta theta epsilon c d o t sin theta caret n right right and epsilon n e q one end cases evaluating this yields e equals x plus one 60 x 3 plus 1 1400 x 5 plus 1 25200 x 7 plus 43 17 million 248000 x 9 plus 1213 7207200000 x 11 plus 151439 12713500800000 x 13 x equals 6 m 1 3 e equals 1 1 1 minus em minus e1 minus e4 m 3 3 plus 9 e2 plus e1 minus e 7 M five five minus two hundred twenty five E three plus 
54 e2 plus e1 minus e10 m 7 7 plus 11,025 E4 plus 4,131 E3 plus 243 E2 plus E1 1 minus E13 M99 E does not equal 1. Display style E equals begin cases. Display style x plus frac 160 x caret 3 plus frac 1 1400 x caret 5 plus frac 1 25,200 x caret 7 plus frac 43 17 x caret 9 plus frac 1213 x caret 11 plus frac 151439 x caret 13 c d o t s x equals 6 m caret frac 1 3 and epsilon equals 1 display style frac 1 1 epsilon m frac epsilon 1 epsilon caret 4 frac m caret 3 3 plus frac 9 epsilon caret 2 plus epsilon 1 epsilon caret 7 frac m caret 5 5 frac 225 epsilon caret 3 plus 5 4 epsilon caret 2 plus epsilon 1 epsilon caret 10 frac m caret 7 7 plus frac 11,025 Epsilon carrot four plus four one three one Epsilon carrot three plus two four three Epsilon carrot two plus Epsilon one Epsilon carrot thirteen FRAC M carrot nine nine C D O T S and Epsilon N E Q one end cases alternatively Kepler's equation can be solved numerically. First one must guess a value of e display style e and solve for time of flight then adjust e display style e as necessary to bring the computed time of flight closer to the desired value until the required precision is achieved Usually Newton's method is used to achieve relatively fast convergence The main difficulty with this approach is that it can take prohibitively long to converge for the extreme elliptical orbits For near parabolic orbits eccentricity e display style epsilon is nearly 1 and plugging e equals 1 display style e equals 1 into the formula for mean anomaly e minus sin e display style e sin e we find ourselves subtracting two nearly equal values and accuracy suffers for near circular orbits, it is hard to find the periopsis in the first place and truly circular orbits have no periopsis at all. Furthermore, the equation was derived on the assumption of an elliptical orbit, and so it does not hold for parabolic or hyperbolic orbits. These difficulties are what led to the development of the universal variable formulation, described below. Conic orbits. For simple procedures, such as computing the delta-v for coplanar transfer ellipses, traditional approaches are fairly effective. Others, such as time of flight are far more complicated, especially for near-circular and hyperbolic orbits. The patched conic approximation The Hohmann transfer orbit alone is a poor approximation for interplanetary trajectories because it neglects the planet's own gravity. Planetary gravity dominates the behavior of the spacecraft in the vicinity of a planet and in most cases Hohmann severely overestimates delta-v, and produces highly inaccurate prescriptions for burn timings. A relatively simple way to get a first-order approximation of delta-v is based on the patched conic approximation technique. One must choose the one dominant gravitating body in each region of space through which the trajectory will pass, and to model only that body's effects in that region. For instance, on a trajectory from the Earth to Mars, one would begin by considering only the Earth's gravity until the trajectory reaches a distance where the Earth's gravity no longer dominates that of the Sun. The spacecraft would be given escape velocity to send it on its way to interplanetary space. Next, one would consider only the Sun's gravity until the trajectory reaches the neighborhood of Mars. During this stage, the transfer orbit model is appropriate. 
Finally, only Mars's gravity is considered during the final portion of the trajectory where Mars's gravity dominates the spacecraft's behavior. The spacecraft would approach Mars on a hyperbolic orbit, and a final retrograde burn would slow the spacecraft enough to be captured by Mars. The size of the neighborhoods or spheres of influence vary with radius r s o i display style r underscore s o i r s o i equals a p m p m s 2 5 Display style R underscore SOI equals a underscore P left FRAC M underscore P M underscore S right carrot two fifths where A P Display style a underscore P is the semi major axis of the planet's orbit relative to the Sun M P Display style M underscore P and M S Display style m underscore s are the masses of the planet and sun, respectively. This simplification is sufficient to compute rough estimates of fuel requirements and rough time of flight estimates, but it is not generally accurate enough to guide a spacecraft to its destination. For that, numerical methods are required. Topic: The universal variable formulation. To address computational shortcomings of traditional approaches for solving the two-body problem, the universal variable formulation was developed. It works equally well for the circular, elliptical, parabolic, and hyperbolic cases, the differential equations converging well when integrated for any orbit. It also generalizes well to problems incorporating perturbation theory. Topic. Perturbations. The universal variable formulation works well with the variation of parameters technique, except now, instead of the six Keplerian orbital elements, we use a different set of orbital elements, namely, the satellite's initial position and velocity vectors x 0 and v 0 at a given epoch T equals zero. Display style T equals zero. In a two-body simulation, these elements are sufficient to compute the satellite's position and velocity at any time in the future using the universal variable formulation. Conversely, at any moment in the satellite's orbit, we can measure its position and velocity, and then use the universal variable approach to determine what its initial position and velocity would have been at the epoch. In perfect two-body motion, these orbital elements would be invariant, just like the Keplerian elements would be. However, perturbations cause the orbital elements to change over time. Hence, we write the position element as x 0 t displaystyle x underscore 0 t and the velocity element as v 0 t Display style v underscore zero t, indicating that they vary with time. The technique to compute the effect of perturbations becomes one of finding expressions, either exact or approximate, for the functions x zero t, display style x underscore zero t, and v zero t, display style v underscore zero t. The following are some effects which make real orbits differ from the simple models based on a spherical Earth. Most of them can be handled on short timescales perhaps less than a few thousand orbits by perturbation theory because they are small relative to the corresponding two-body effects. Equatorial bulges cause precession of the node and the perigee Tesseral harmonics of the gravity field introduce additional perturbations Lunar and solar gravity perturbations alter the orbits 
Atmospheric drag reduces the semi-major axis unless makeup thrust is used over very long timescales, perhaps millions of orbits, even small perturbations can dominate, and the behavior can become chaotic. On the other hand, the various perturbations can be orchestrated by clever astrodynamicists to assist with orbit maintenance tasks, such as station keeping, ground track maintenance or adjustment, or phasing of perigee to cover selected targets at low altitude. <laughs> Orbital maneuver In spaceflight, an orbital maneuver is the use of propulsion systems to change the orbit of a spacecraft. For spacecraft far from Earth—for example those in orbits around the Sun—an orbital maneuver is called a deep space maneuver DSM. <laughs> <laughs> Orbital transfer Transfer orbits are usually elliptical orbits that allow spacecraft to move from one usually substantially circular orbit to another. Usually they require a burn at the start, a burn at the end, and sometimes one or more burns in the middle. The Hohmann transfer orbit requires a minimal delta V. A bi-elliptic transfer can require less energy than the Hohmann transfer, if the ratio of orbits is 11.94 or greater, but comes at the cost of increased trip time over the Hohmann transfer. Faster transfers may use any orbit that intersects both the original and destination orbits, at the cost of higher delta V. Using low thrust engines, such as electrical propulsion, if the initial orbit is supersynchronous to the final desired circular orbit then the optimal transfer orbit is achieved by thrusting continuously in the direction of the velocity at apogee. This method however takes much longer due to the low thrust, for the case of orbital transfer between non-coplanar orbits, the change of plane thrust must be made at the point where the orbital planes intersect the node. As the objective is to change the direction of the velocity vector by an angle equal to the angle between the planes, almost all of this thrust should be made when the spacecraft is at the node near the apopsy, when the magnitude of the velocity vector is at its lowest. However, a small fraction of the orbital inclination change can be made at the node near the periapse, by slightly angling the transfer orbit injection thrust in the direction of the desired inclination change. This works because the cosine of a small angle is very nearly 1, resulting in the small plane change being effectively free. Despite the high velocity of the spacecraft near periapse, as the Oberth effect due to the increased, slightly angled thrust exceeds the cost of the thrust in the orbit normal axis. Gravity assist and the Oberth effect In a gravity assist, a spacecraft swings by a planet and leaves in a different direction, at a different speed. This is useful to speed or slow a spacecraft instead of carrying more fuel. This maneuver can be approximated by an elastic collision at large distances, though the flyby does not involve any physical contact. Due to Newton's third law equal and opposite reaction, any momentum gained by a spacecraft must be lost by the planet, or vice versa. However, because the planet is much, much more massive than the spacecraft, the effect on the planet's orbit is negligible. The Oberth effect can be employed, particularly during a gravity assist operation. This effect is that use of a propulsion system works better at high speeds, and hence course changes are best done when close to a gravitating body, this can multiply the effective delta V. <laughs> Interplanetary transport network and fuzzy orbits It is now possible to use computers to search for routes using the nonlinearities in the gravity of the planets and moons of the solar system. For example, it is possible to plot an orbit from high Earth orbit to Mars, passing close to one of the Earth's Trojan points. Collectively referred to as the Interplanetary Transport Network, these highly perturbative, even chaotic, orbital trajectories in principle need no fuel beyond that needed to reach the Lagrange point in practice keeping to the trajectory requires some course corrections. The biggest problem with them is they can be exceedingly slow, taking many years. In addition launch windows can be very far apart. They have, however, been employed on projects such as Genesis. This spacecraft visited the Earth-Sun L1 point and returned using very little propellant. <laughs> See also